Today, we'll be covering Dynamics 365 2021 Release Wave 2 and going through the key updates that will be released between October 2021 and March 2022. The key sections we'll be touching on are the updated look and feel, a new bulk update function, improved sitemap, and perhaps the most exciting, Teams integrations with Dynamics. With the new updates coming to Dynamics with the Wave 2 release, there are some changes to the look and feel within the application. Let's jump across into the accounts view and immediately you'll see it looks different. The heading titles are now in bold, making them clearer than before, which is a very welcome change in my opinion. You'll also see that the view itself is slightly different with the lines between the records being clearer also. Going back to one of our previous sessions, we mentioned the drag and click to select multiple records. This is no longer the case. With the update, we again have the ability to shift and click to select a range of records, which is much more intuitive. So that's actually bringing us back to what it was a few updates ago, whereas once we came to version nine, that was no longer available to do the shift click. So it's it's great that they've brought that back. Uh, and you still have the option to select all up the top as well. So that has remained there. I'm now going to draw your attention to the top right section of our view. You'll see the familiar advanced filter pane or, or view, but there is now another icon. And that's just to the left, and this is the column editor. If I click this button, a pane will pop open, allowing me to drag and reorder the fields in this view. So I might want to move address one down below the primary contact. We might put the primary contact just below the account name. I can even add additional fields to the view, either from this entity that we are looking at, or any related entities. And you can do that with the add column option. And we might have a look at the primary contacts email address. And then you would press close there and you'll see that's added that in there. Next, if we press apply, you'll see that we've now shifted primary contacts to the left, and we now have the email address too for our primary contact. Unfortunately, this is not remembered if you go to another section of the system and return, but it is a nice option if you need to quickly view an extra detail without up updating the underlying view. There's also been a change when setting your default view on an entity. So previously, if you click, click the drop down here, you would have seen pins all down next to the names of each view to set one of them as your favorite. And that would be there at all times. Now, you will see that there is default written next to your default view, and there is no pins available next to the other views. To change your default view, you would need to open a different view. So we might open my active accounts. And then we need to click the drop down again. And down the bottom, you'll see set current view as my default. So although this is an extra step to updating your default view, this is done very infrequently. And the improved visuals of not having a pin on every view more than makes up for this change. The final look and feel change takes place within the records. As I open up one of our accounts, next to our record set option, we now have an additional one here to open in a new window. Clicking it will do as it says and open a new window for you of that record. So it's now popped it open. I'm just going to close that down now. And what you'll see is on our main browser page, it will actually go back to the view for you. So 
it's a bit of a niche use, but I'm sure it will bring benefit to some of you. Next up is an update to the bulk edit function. After we select multiple records, and then press edit, you will see a new bulk updating experience and it will open as a side pane on the right hand side. It will present to you the actual form as it appears if you were to open up a record, even providing the ability to change the form that you're working with. So if a field is missing on your main form that you're wanting to update, but it's on one of your secondary forms, you could change it there and, and have the option to be able to update that as well. So I'm going to go and update, let's say, the relationship type, and we'll make them customers. And once I press save, what you will see is it will bring up the record update status as it works through and tells you how far into the process it is. So you'll see that now it says saving one of three records. It's going to move through to two of three, then three of three, and now we're done. So this is a great update. As in the past, you would sit there while it slowly ticks away, not knowing how long is remaining. And when you're doing a bulk update on a significant number of records, uh, it, it, you're sort of sitting in the dark a little bit. So it's great to have that visual of how far through the progress we are. For those of you who don't do many bulk updates, this may not seem like much, but for me, this is an amazing change that I can't wait to make the most of. OK, we're going to jump across to some slides now, as these are some of the upcoming pieces that aren't actually released yet and the ones that we're looking forward to coming in the coming months. The first one being the improved design in model driven apps. On the left hand side here, you can see what the sitemap currently looks like, and there is no ability to minimize down the options available. And the list can very easily fill up and go off the screen causing users to need to scroll down to view all of the options, which does not always happen. Now, as we move across and have a look at, at these screenshots here, with the update, you'll have the ability to collapse sections down, making them easier to work with. Not a game-changing update, but absolutely a nice to have, and anything that can make the visual experience nicer for the users or easier to navigate will always be a big win. So this is going to be in general availability in October this year, so not too long to wait at all. Our final update that will be covered today is around the huge changes coming to Microsoft Teams. If you haven't heard already, Microsoft is putting in a lot of work integrating Microsoft Teams and Dynamics. In this first photo, you'll see an example of being able to make Teams calls directly from within Dynamics, along with taking some notes and a transcription. The notes you take can then be linked back onto that Dynamics record in CRM. So this is going to be a very, very cool update, uh, integrating it all together. Next up, we have a Teams chat directly in Dynamics. In this example, you can view multiple chats all linked against a case record in CRM. So you can see that on the right here, these are all linked chats linked to this case, and you'll see that there's four there as well as one additional one available to you as well. In addition to this update, Microsoft will also be adding the ability to create a Teams meeting when scheduling an appointment from Dynamics 365. So the link where you access a Teams meeting will be generated for you straight from within Dynamics 365 when you're creating that appointment. On top of that, you can also then join a Teams meeting with a single click from within CRM as well. All of these changes for the, for the Teams integration are going to be available in January of 2022. They are a little way off, but absolutely going to be worth the wait. As all of these changes are going to make Dynamics CRM an even greater tool for collaboration and draw the power of both tools together. 
So that concludes our first session on the Wave 2 release for 2021. And that's right, I said first session. There is a lot more to unpack with this new release. So we'll be running another bite session on this topic to ensure we give all the major updates the screen time they deserve. We are really excited about all the changes we've been able to show you today and can't wait to bring you another update as there has been a lot of investment recently with Microsoft in their CRM product, which is great to see, and in particular, linking it with Teams and, and drawing together the power of both of those tools.